I'm Michelle. This is my so-called handmade life. This is a YouTube channel where I talk about knitting and crochet and just whatever I'm making as far as a thing or making of my life. And you guys have been joining me for like six years now. It's not a monetized channel. It's not a business. It's just me talking to you. So if you have something to work on or you want to take a walk and you like the idea of a conversation, please listen. I ask a lot of questions and when I talk about things, I encourage you to respond in the comments. And what you say informs what I talk about the next time. So it's as much a dialogue as I can do here on YouTube. And that has been a real joy. I just haven't had a lot of time lately, but you know why. And I'll talk a little about that too today. Um, but I just on a whim, I was like, I want to talk to my knitting friends today. So I pulled out a camera and I'm trying to throw something together for you. And it's very thrown together. Thank you for everyone who wished me a happy 50th birthday. And I feel like I'm in good company. Uh, you said I've joined the over 50 club, uh, Karen, Katinka, Maureen, Debbie, Nick. Mm, I don't know if I'm missing Virginia. Um, and I know there's more of you that are out there. Um, thank you so much. I thought 50 was like, I, it was such an abstract concept when I was younger. Do you remember back in the eighties, people would throw over the hill parties and they would like have black balloons and, you know, dress in black. I don't think people do that now. Uh, it's kind of hokey. My family never did things like that. That was silly and extravagant to them, but 50 seemed like such an arbitrary moment to me to make over the hill when I was young. And it was really strange to finally be there, but I had no time to spend on the surreal nature of it because I was just feeling good. I talked to you in the last episode about how some chronic pain that I've dealt with since my second child was born so my mid twenties seems to be fixed and I've had no pain for six months now. And it's like having my life back. It's like having use of a limb that you haven't been able to use for 25 years or, or uh, opening a door in your house and realizing your house is twice as big as you thought it was. And you have space. You don't have to live on top of each other anymore. You have a little breathing room. That's what this last six months has been for me. Karen, you were saying you still feel like you're in your 20s. Me too. When I dream, I'm the age that both of my kids were born. Uh, so about 26, 27. And that's just, I guess my brain, they were so significant or else my brain just can't imagine a world without them. So they're always in it. And I'm always an age where it makes sense, but I'm never like I, in my dreams, I never feel like I did through my thirties and forties. I didn't feel pain in my dreams. I felt young and healthy and I could take off running. I could do whatever. Of course, most of my dreams are super tedious where like I'm trying to make a phone call and all I have is a hand calculator, you know, that kind of thing. But and I also dream about hurting kittens, like saving kittens. There's another kitten and I'm trying to gather them all. I don't know. 50, it doesn't feel that different than I did when I was younger. I think because I've reclaimed like a pain-free life. So it's been pretty cool. I asked you guys, how was your 2023? What are some of your goals for 2024? And some of you shared. And then in the episode before I asked, what were some things you went off pattern to just create and make? And, um, Sarah had said that she made a baby bonnet for one of her babies and then made several as gifts and then has made a pinafore dress for her daughter and enjoyed it so much. She just made up the pattern and felt like a baby knit was a safe place to experiment. And I agree. It's like low risk, right? If you were to somehow ruin the yarn, it's just a small amount, right? It's just like a little baby thing. And if you have to rip back halfway to fix something, what would you, maybe two days work? Maybe. It's not like if you were making an adult sized garment. That's really smart, Sarah. Um, and she's has the goal of experimenting more in the next year. She Bear was saying that 
after years of knitting for five people, and it was often very stressful, I guess, trying to churn out things in time for five people. She wants to use more stash. The kids are like kind of rebelling. They don't want the knits anymore. And so after a period of grief, she decided to use this time to, um, oh, what were the words you used, she bear? Reclaim some calm. Reclaim a bit of calm in her knitting. And I thought that was so funny because for anyone who doesn't knit and is not on social media nowadays, that would sound bizarre. Like how wild can knitting be? How can knitting be stressful? But it can. <laughs> and all through 2023, the, st <clears throat> the stash busting, the new year thing, oh yeah, um, the way we accumulate things can be very stressful. So her goal was to knit things that bring her joy to make. She's not gonna worry about if it's a necessity or hurrying out a gift for somebody. It's just gonna be all pleasure, all enjoyment, and to try and use some stash. I think that's a really healthy goal. And Karen is wanting to knit only things she wants to wear, not just interesting projects or things that look great, but they're not really her style. She's trying to kind of fine tune what she makes for herself and how she spends her craft time. And yes, not buying more stuff, you know, uh, willy nilly, but she's, Karen's always kept her stash to a minimum, so that wouldn't be hard for her. But she is uh, like ripping back some of the things she made and reusing the yarn for something she'll actually wear. And she's been giving a lot of her knits away, which I imagine is a pretty precious gift for her friends and family to receive because her knits are so perfectly executed. They're so beautiful. So I made an episode, uh, probably two episodes back, back about the moose sweater from How I Met Your Mother. It was my ugly Christmas sweater and it was also just kind of a fun thing. I, I have a link to the blog post that has the chart. You can have it, it's free, and kind of how I did things but I roughly used Elizabeth Zimmerman's sweater pattern and I have a link to her sweater recipe book, which is a must have if you're interested in knitting at all. Um, and Kaylin was saying it was a really good companion to her knitting that Christmas. She had a bunch of last minute gifts and she actually kind of thrives on that last minute knitting. Um, she said she's hid in a back room to put tassels on something as gifts were being opened at family gatherings. And even that Christmas, a family member who had to work and wasn't at the big event the night before, she was like, well, I may as well whip them up something while we're all together. And then they had a handmade gift they could open at Christmas. Um, I don't know if I commented on that before in the last episode, but I think that's so funny, Kaylin, picturing you adding tassels quickly while the presents are being ripped open. That's uh, really funny. That's the kind of pressure She Bear is talking about. Not everyone likes that crunch time knitting. I don't. I think a lot of my stress for crafting has been having eyes, like that phrase my dad would say, your eyes are too big for your stomach where you go to like Luby's and you put too much on your plate and of course you can't eat it all and it's a waste. That's kind of how I do a lot of things or did crafting things. But I found the secret to not spending money on crafting. It's spending money on Pilates training. <laughs> you don't have time to craft. You don't have time to even look at yarn or patterns and it's a chunk of change, so it, they replace one another. <clears throat> uh, that's totally been taking up all of my time, but it's been fun and I'm going to tell you some about it later. Uh, let me show you some progress on things. Um, and when I talk about some of the health things happening with me, I'll talk about some of your health goals that you mentioned. Here's where I've been Another source of stress and knitting in the past for me was doing test knits and then it would come like to crunch time. I cannot tell you how many family crises have happened during the important part of a one month test knit. This wasn't a test knit, it was kind of a pre-knit for Albina McLaughlin, 
but I feel that I have failed to get it out in a timely way. It should have been out probably the beginning of February and now we're in March and I'm about to cast off the body. I am, I'm in the process. Ooh, I don't wanna rip the yarn. I'm in the process of casting off the body. So it looks super small. This is the six by two, but you see it's going to stretch out like this and even more so with blocking. This is knitted in yarn. It's a really beautiful colorway. Um, it's like two kinds of teal together and it's going to have a button closure on one shoulder. And um, it's kind of uh, a little bit of a drop shoulder, just a little. I did add a little length to the armholes just because I like having that extra room. And I told you how I kind of modified the, uh, it's, it's messed up now, the, um, the cast on. Ah, what do you call the kind of cast on where you, uh, you can pull it out and you can knit right onto it. Ah, I keep wanting to say probationary <laughs> cast on. Oh, this is, I'm telling you, my brain is fried. I am learning so much. It's all being crammed in. It's not a preliminary cast on, but I think it starts with a P. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. I'm 50, okay? Um, it would just tear and rip, so I provisionary cast on. That's the word. Um, so I did just, I started some knitting in another easy to remove slick yarn, and then I started knitting this into it. To me, that was a good solution to yarn that is very fragile. Newtoden is like um, unspun or pre spun yarn, just touching it makes it fall apart and you have to be super careful. So this was really a labor of love. It took twice as long as it would have taken with something else. And when I started this pre-knit, I had no idea I was going to be pain-free and that that part of my life, the movement part of my life would be starting again. And I couldn't pass up the chance to get training in Pilates. So that is what I did but I do think I'm going to love this. And as all, with all of her patterns, they're very thoughtfully designed, um, thoughtfully executed. And I mean, honestly, I think they're thoughtfully priced. I think that her prices are good. Uh, they're fair. And she, her newsletter, if I'll have a link to it or to where you can get her newsletter, possibly on her Instagram. It is, she offers all this insight into how she styles or uses her knitwear, cleans that cleans it, how she gets her inspiration, and often has coupon codes that are really good for her knits. So I don't think I was a good pre-knitter. I wouldn't normally be like this, but it took me three days to get the provisional cast on, and then all the knitting has been slow going. I've I've knit a sweater in Newtoden before, but for some reason I'm having much more trouble. I just think it's because this is two strands rather than three. And for my Fisherman's Muse, I did three strands. It kind of made a bulky, maybe kind of a hefty air in weight. This is more like DK with the two strands together. And it's just been really a mess to work with. It's been really hard. I think when it's all together, you know, the scales of the wool, they will hold together. I think it will be a nice um, lightweight. It looks bulky, but when it blocks out, I think it's gonna be kind of filmy and drapey and perfect. I don't think I need to be a pre-knitter or test knitter again until my life is very different. But again, it was a big surprise to have the ability to do the training that I'm doing. So here's my progress on this one I could do while at the movies or watching something. So I've made a few inches of progress on Lila now by French Press Knits. Again, it is super um, crammed onto a small needle. But this is old Valley Yarns Northampton. It's like ocean and maybe a silver gray. I don't remember what I wanted to make 
with this. Uh, it was something kind of modular looking, um, very early 2000s. Uh, obviously I didn't do it. And I do have two sleeves already made. They are the swatch. Um, I did this, I cast this on with Laura and Allison party and Laura McDougall has kind of led that, I think every year because she has like four of these and they all look really good, different color combos. And several people in like their, uh, within their community have knit more than one. And so it's really inspiring. And when you join the community, you get access to a lot of knit alongs free. And they aren't just knit alongs, they do have like instruction for how you might change things. She had info on how deep to make uh, your raglan uh, decreases so that you would have the arm depth you want and to better fit your body. So there's a lot of freebies to joining their community. Um, and they're doing like trips to Iceland that look like probably the most fun as far as knitting retreats. I don't know if I'll ever do another knitting retreat. I just don't think, uh, I just don't think I will. Though there are uh, designers that come here locally and they do classes, maybe I would do that, but um, I don't know, an Icelandic knitting retreat would be fun and theirs look like the most fun of any knitting retreat. So when I asked some of your knits that you've kind of fumbled around with and invented, you know, I did some things with socks recently, I showed you, and then the moose sweater. Um, Karen said that she has two simple raglan sweaters and a very simple wrap that she just made up. And, uh, and she loves them and wears them all the time. Now she has really great understated classic pieces, but she also knits a lot of unusual things that I would call fancy. This is me speaking, not her, uh, from her Instagram, just really statement pieces. Uh, so I think it's kind of telling about her that her favorite pieces are classic basics. I think that's probably true for a lot of us. The thing I wanted to talk about that has to do with famous knits this week is, um, or this <laughs> rather this month, is the Davern Tam and Mitten set that I want to make. I'm in the process of making the Tam. I have no more progress than the last time I showed you by Virginia Sattler Reimer. Virginia's like, okay, if you've watched, you don't have to have watched the show, but if you've watched All Creatures Great and Small, um, the clothing is so great. It is such a feast for the knitter's eyes. Um, so much of Virginia's patterns, her tams and mittens and wraps, they make me think of this era. And I see things that look very much like even if it's just a vest that that tv series has some of the best color work vest cabled vests cabled sweaters and beautiful hats all over the place so this is my progress on the davern tam and i shared with you that she has kits that the woolly thistle sells and i really like the woolly thistle i think it's a really good source for um, European yarns and books, but then other things. It's not all just um, things from Europe. The kit and the colors there are to me perfect. That's the perfect colors for Davern. But when I wanted, when I decided I wanted to make this, they were sold out. <clears throat> now, before I cast this on, I had already, I think I ordered one color of palette to make this work. No. I ordered probably about three or four colors of palette, actually. Palette from Knit Picks to make this work. But then I had some stash yarn to put with it and I had already made that decision and ordered it when the kits came back for sale on the Woolly Thistle. So I'm sticking with what I ordered, but um, I think this is cute. I think it's a really sweet pattern. It feels really vintage. And I gotta say, I'm going to be so proud to wear this hat and mitten set <laughs> for that one cold day next year. Um, have you seen All Creatures Great and Small? You know, um, I told you I have dreams of saving kittens all the time. 
Um, I spend way too much time watching GeoBeats um, happy stories about animals <laughs> on YouTube. If I get on YouTube, that's probably what I'm watching now. I haven't kept up on anything in the knitting world, except one thing, and I'll share that in a minute. Um, but I've been watching all the animal rescue stuff, and I'll link one I saw about a woman who had a three-year friendship with a crow. And I mean, it was like her pet, a wild crow. It was such a good story. Kind of sad, but good. Um, <clears throat> all Creatures Great and Small is based on a book by James Harriet. I've had never heard of it before, but he's just a country doctor, vet, that goes to an area, a rural area, to be a vet, and he leaves home, and he's young, and nervous and he's working with a sort of a crotchety um, vet in the area and then it's everything that happens but each series episode has uh, some animal crisis. <laughs> it's just perfect for me. I'm, I'm going to show you as I'm talking some images from it. Um, I would say that Helen probably has the best knitwear in the show. Just right off in the first season that green sweater it looks like something that would totally be made today by Sari Nordland. Um, the cable work on it, uh, sometimes the necklines uh, on some of her sweaters, and then vests. Uh, probably those are my favorite, but all the men wear really great vests, both color work and cabled. And then you'll find all of these people who are just farmers, very rural, practical lifestyle, they wear a lot of great hardy knits. Um, and they just kind of, I don't know, every episode is sort of a feast for my eyes. I think, so I was going to share some of my favorite episodes. In the first season, when James is delivering Susie's puppies, at the Chapman's house. I thought that was the sweetest episode and it was full of great knitwear because Miss Chapman is wearing this really great um, color work sweater top. And she's talking, her and her husband are talking about how they met, challenges for their marriage, how they fell in love. And meanwhile, James is nursing his love for Helen and she happens to be there and helps him deliver uh, Susie's puppies. I won't tell you how that ended up with the puppies, but it was a very sweet episode, and I loved uh, Miss Chapman's blanket that she had on the couch that, um, you know, Helen's pulled over her as she they stay there overnight. And I love her sweater, and of course, I love the story. Um, there was also an episode. It was season four, episode two. It was called Carpe Diem. Oh, this one was good with uh, an older man. And his cow was really more costly maintaining her than what she was producing. And the vet said, you know, financially, this is a liability. You might want to consider letting her go. And that would be to the meat processing. And the vet just kind of comes up with a way where he can save Blossom the cow. I just thought that was really sweet. That whole episode, I, I, I love the idea of, I don't know him helping the guy figure out a way to keep an animal alive just because it had been such a good little partner on the farm. Um, basically a pet and like part of the family. Uh, I loved that. I thought that the introduction of Carmody, uh, like a junior vet in training in season four, was fun. Uh, he is completely um, robotic almost, like just his head is in a book, he's all about information, he has no empathy. It was just a fun foil for the other characters, especially with Tristan gone. And the guy who played Tristan was also in The Durrells in Corfu, which I haven't finished watching, Anna, because I promised you I would read the book first. So I am going to do that, and it may be the next book I read, actually, when I finish the series I'm on. I'm so tired of it. Um, Season four, episode one, Broodiness, where James uh, has a suspicion that this sick dog uh, in town is sick because the family is neglecting it. They don't have a lot of means and he feels like they just aren't taking care of it. But then he investigates and finds the little boy will give up meals so that his dog has food and 
comes up with a way to help him and find something for the boy to do, like for work. In this world of really negative, dark, edgy shows, sometimes I just want something sweet where people wear cute knitwear, you know? Uh, season two, episode five, The Last Man In. That is when uh, some hurt feelings and grudges kind of need to be dealt with. And it's all handled in a town cricket match. And that is like sweater Rama. Um, so many good knits. Because there's like a traditional sort of uh, vest or v neck sweater, sort of a sportsman sweater that a lot of the cricket players wear, and then just everything everyone else has. It is, I don't know, the costume, co the costume department of the series is awesome. And I thought it was a neat way of dealing with hurt feelings. So that's just a few of my favorite episodes. And have you watched it? And what are your favorite episodes? Who are your favorite characters in the show? Um, I don't think it's just in my head that James looks like my son to me. <laughs> but I see a resemblance and so in my mind I'm thinking of my kids and I have these maternal feelings toward his character as he tries to find his way in a new community. Um, I was going to tell you, Summer Lee has some sock patterns out called the Darrowby set, which is where <clears throat> James is now living. And one is a, a, a sock pattern based on one of Tristan's vests, which I'm going to show you here. And that vest, he wears a ton throughout the first few seasons in the show. And then another has a Fair Isle pattern on the cuff that looks so much like um, one of the sweaters that Helen wears throughout the series. And I like how the lace pattern that comes down off the cuff has that look of the ribbing of Helen's sweater. So the entire sock has the same feel as the sweater that Helen wears, and I'm showing images, I should add them here, where you'll know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> it's really cute, and that came out as I was thinking, oh, I'm going to talk about some of the famous knits in that show, and so I thought it was really uh, fun that those that pattern is out. Like, I'm not the only person who loves the color work in these uh, sweaters. When I first thought, ooh, I'll see if there's something, you know, if someone's recreated some of the actual knits from the show, I feel like I saw something somewhere online. Oh no, I know what it is. Um, there's at least two bloggers or YouTubers who have done videos on that. Tanya Knits, she does Nerdy Knitting. It's a YouTube channel. She has done an episode about all creatures great and small and maybe someone else, but I think it was Tanya who um, talks a little more about it. And I think she goes more in depth than I do. I'm more telling you my favorite storylines and why I love the show so much. But, um, and I'm showing you how it has inspired my Davern hat and uh, mitts set. And then all of Virginia's patterns work really well with this kind of vintage feel. There's a sweet vintage feel to all of them. Maureen said, I look like I've found new energy. It's true, I have. And I explained why earlier. Um, some of you have some health goals. Lori, you were saying you want to start strength training. You know you need to for muscle mass and bone loss to prevent bone loss and uh, I don't know if you started because it's now March and you wrote that in January, I think, but um, I read this book years ago, <sighs> Strong Women Stay Young, I think, and then she has like another one, Strong Women Stay Slim or something, but it was basically all the same information. Um, it was like six to eight very basic exercises. Like one is just a sitting squat. I don't even think you hold weights. You just sit down, tap the chair and stand up. And you just do this, like a cycle through them. It's like six exercises. You do like, I don't know, eight reps till lifting a weight that makes it really, really hard on the last one. And then you do it one more time. We're talking 10 minutes, maybe 15. That has always stayed with me. And I felt like, okay, I could do 10 or 15 minutes 
to fight osteoporosis and have some strength as I get older because I found it super boring and I still do. I hate it. I was just gonna say, Lori, you can find six basic full body movements and do, you know, hold a heavy enough weight that eight of them are difficult, do them each, then do them again and you're done in 10 minutes. And I really think that twice a week is enough. I do. For a person who just is doing it for basic health, like me or like you, I think 10 to 15 minutes is enough. Um, anything more, I just don't think we can keep up, especially if we hate it. <laughs> so good luck to you. I hope that's working for you. And um, She Bear and Karen, I hope your goals with knitting things that you want to wear or just that you want to knit, I hope you're doing well with that. I'd be I'd love to hear what you've started making already because certainly it's March. You've already begun doing that. Nick, I was thinking about what you said that you've got a lot of areas in your life you're super joyful about, but there's one area that you know there has to be a change and it's the stress of work. I hope that you're already finding a way <clears throat> to deal with it, either a way to better handle it on, from your side or to juggle things or, I don't know, delegate or handle things differently at work to protect you from stress because part of, you know, part of that being young and thinking, oh, 50 sounds so far away, is thinking stress is normal. And I think today's 25-year-old believes an incredible amount of stress is normal compared to what I thought was normal. I just thought being super busy, being involved in too many things was the norm. And then on top of that, there was like some really unhealthy things happening in my home. <clears throat> and all of it was too much for me when I was a, a kid. Then later as an adult, my health is already kind of tenuous and I'm adding more and more and more and I'm doing more and more stuff. Uh, I really thought when people talked about stress hurting your health, I really thought they meant something like someone getting cancer that you love. <laughs> I really didn't think they meant only getting far, five to six hours of sleep at night or watching too much TV and not getting sleep or being involved in too many civic groups. You know, I just, I didn't take that serious until I took that skincare boot camp. And that's where, really where I started making these videos in 2018. It was like a year after I had done that and my skin had finally cleared up, but I have, I have major scarring from super bad cystic acne and it was all hormonal imbalance that kicked in mostly through stress. So I just encourage you. I think you're already doing it. You recognize it's a problem and I think that's wisdom for you to see that, you know what, this isn't healthy, I need to change it. I, I trust that you probably already started doing something about it. Let, let me know, I really wanna know how it's going. A weird fun fact that's not fun, that pelvic floor thing that happened to me, it, my uh, SI joints, you know, your sacrum, it's all attached to your pelvic floor. It's like this trampoline under you and it connects to bone, bony protrusions like your SI joints, your sacrum. I, um, when I would get stressed out, like really upset or scared, I would literally immediately feel a wrenching in my hips. I'm not even moving. Just, it would tighten up and it would change. It was my pelvic floor <laughs> tightening. Um, it was super hypertonic and it would just kind of wrench inside of me. Um, that is the power of stress on the body. That's just one example, but I'm reinforcing what you already know. We really do need to eliminate a lot of the stress. And then the whole trying to keep stash busting, which I believe Nick said you're trying, you said you were trying to do that still. Yes, you will. Um, that's another, you know, thing. It's a small thing. But remember Leah was saying that just having too much stuff around her that she can't use anytime soon, maybe the guilt of why am I not using it or just the collection added stress to her. It made it hard for her to focus and relax. So 
even stuff like that, that's a no brainer. Just get rid of it, give it away, sell it. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you're doing something about that stress. Katinka, I hope that you get uh, some success with your back and finding a place to do your wild swimming. I love that you do that and I hope that you find some either substitute for it or a place to swim where you are right now. So my goal for the year, like I said, I want to finish this training and I'm doing it just for me, but things have been going so well with me physically that I do feel like I will be teaching. Um, and I'm not sure how I'll do that if from my home or what my husband's all like, well, you know, insulate the garage. You can have a little studio down there. Um, I definitely can't do it in this little tiny room that I'm in as it is. I like hit a wall, hit a window, move in on that reformer. Just because I'm able to move more now, my body is changing. Mostly I'm just getting muscle again, whereas I would try to do some strength training to take care of my body as I get older, I could never really get very far into it without having to take a week off. And then like when you start back, it's almost like you take two steps back, one step forward. That's how I felt. But I feel like I've gotten, I'm catching up really fast. And that's probably because I never fully gave up. I, I think plugging away and trying has helped me to gain some of that um, strength back. Six months ago, when I started trying to do Pilates again, my brain knew what to do, but my body could not do it. I mean, so many of the things, and I felt very frustrated, but I was like, well, you know, I was at this point once before I can do this again, and I am amazed at how fast my body got with the program. I guess what I'm saying is that I started accepting this idea that we have to age a certain way because it was happening to me, but we don't necessarily. And the human body can make up for lost time. It can. So yeah, I have some new energy from that. And Lori, you were saying that it makes you think of that book, all, Oh, the Places You Will Go. <laughs> you know, what we're capable of, what our future is um, or could be. Yeah, I feel a lot of possibilities opened to me. The training I'm doing is first and foremost for me because I don't have a lot of money to spend on private lessons and things. And I felt like if I'm gonna drop some, a chunk of change, let me just drop it on the full education so I know for myself, cause I am that kind of person. Like I would sit in my garage and I would do martial arts workouts with a heavy bag and I would come up with really fun, very physical combos. Then I would take them to the Taekwondo class and teach the class. And it was fun for me to find a way to build levels where, you know, the first time you go, we get in lines and we would do drills where everyone would go take a turn and you kind of keep rotating in the line and it's very physical. The first few movements are something anyone could do, but they're still fun and beginners can stay there and then you add to it. And that was so much fun for me. And that I know that's not normal, <laughs> but it was for me. I wanted to be able to do that for myself with Pilates. You, Karen said she likes the reformer and she learned when she was young how important massage was for good health. And so she tries to get massages and her latest thing is taking an exercise ball like this and partially deflating it and just rolling her back on it, you know? rolling her body on it and it's kind of a massage. And I've never thought of doing that, Karen, but I um, I never used these way back when, when I did uh, training, but boy, I've been using this since. Um, when I'm training people who can't do an ab curl, putting this behind their back, it kind of props them up. And so their, their back, you know, can kind of bend up in a natural curl and the head is supported over the shoulders and chest. Uh, I love it. It's all mushy and it's a little more stable that way. Also, um, squeezing it between your legs. When you do anything where you want deep abdominals to work, this is, it does it like nobody's business. So it's been super useful, but I never used props like this before. Um, I did have some books on props and a book that I have that uh, all of 
Ellie Herman's books are good. This is what I started with when I first got back into Pilates. Um, all of her books are good because she goes through beginner all the way through advanced and a lot of the added movements that aren't traditional. You know, there's a big thing about the classical movements. Um, yeah, these are really, a lot of them are kind of wild. You got some wild, this one's not too wild, but um, they take some, uh, some strength and training, but this was really good. And then I joined online Pilates classes and eventually I've gotten some of the flashcards. All of these cards have a QR code and this is Leslie Logan online Pilates classes. And it takes you right to a video that shows you how to do it. And a lot of her videos for how to's on Matt and Reformer, I think they're free on her YouTube. So I don't know if any of you are interested in it, but some of you are like, ooh, Pilates might be good for me. It is at literally at any age and um, it's never too easy. If you think it's easy, you're not doing it right. So I saw something recently um, in Instagram stories it's one of the few knitting related things that's not even knitting that I saw. Skein Cocaine was talking about someone not recognizing her because they hadn't seen her in a decade or so. And they looked at her like aghast, like she hadn't aged well, or at least that's how she felt they were looking at her. And it bucked her. And she's mentioned that, you know, she's decided not to get work done. And I, asked her if she had read Face by Justine Bateman. And I wanted to ask you guys that. Have you read Face? It's an interesting read. When I first read it, I thought, okay, a lot of this I can totally get on board with, but some of this seems a little extreme. Like I can't imagine people being this cruel to a woman because she's aged. But then I thought about where Justine lived, the people around her, a lot of these stories are probably from celebrities. That's a culture that's very focused on the surface. And so it probably was that way. And since then, I've heard people saying things online that are equally just horrible. So it's probably all true. She said they're based on true stories. She just changes some facts around and she's making a movie of it. Um, of course, all the actresses are like super beautiful. Um, and when I say that, I, I don't, my standard of beauty isn't, you know, everyone else's necessarily. I mean, I really think anyone is beautiful, can be beautiful, depending what, what was it my mom said, pretty is as pretty does. I actually really do believe that. But when I say they're super beautiful, I mean, like they have trainers and chefs and, you know, uh, dietitians and such. They don't, look like the average woman who doesn't have access to all of that and has to support a family, take care of kids and whatever, you know, all of a lot of the reasons we have for not necessarily keeping up with appearances and, um, but I'm still interested to see the movie. Um, I've just made a decision I didn't really like make a decision. I just realized as I neared 50, I don't think I'm ever going to get work like that done. Um, like I know lots of people who get Botox now and it's sort of normal and maybe even affordable. And then there's, you know, other little procedures you can get that aren't like full, full blown face, you know, lift. But, and I do have, like my face has aged it aged in a quick period of time. Like I was ageless for the longest time, but then that stressful period, like I talked about, where I had really bad cystic acne and just had a lot of unusual stresses. It was a, just a weird season in life and chronic pain. Um, my hormones just went berserk and I had major skin damage like acne, but also it was just like, instant aging happened. Um, I think there was also fat loss in my face due to stress, which, you know, like you can gain weight, but have certain kind of fat loss in your face. And anyway, what happened happened. And I figure in a few years, I'll, everyone will catch up with me, but I think that it aged me a little, like, I don't know if you can tell, but this room is really bright. Um, a lot of sunlight comes in here. And I think that masks some of 
you know, the age on me. I have other videos that you can see it. Um, I am super expressive with my face and I'm just always going to be, and I don't want to change it. Um, like I don't want to make expressions of like, oh, and then have, you know, wrinkles from pain. I don't want that, but like wrinkles from being super expressive with my forehead. Yeah, one of my kids inherited that. They're just going to have to deal with it. Um, it's, I think it's good to have some expression. Um, laugh lines, that's cool. So I just wondered if you have read Face by Justine Bateman and have you thought about where you stand on if you want to get some procedures done or not? Are you leaving it open? And here's why I mention it. Um, someone told me years ago that when they were young, their teeth were straight. All the kids were getting braces. They didn't get, they didn't need it. But in early adulthood, they started to have like latent crowding. And by the time they were 30, they had very crooked teeth and you know, braces just didn't make sense. They're, then there's trying to get off your, on your feet with work and, and life. And it didn't, it couldn't happen until way later, but when they were an adult, with crooked teeth and everyone they felt like their age and younger had straight teeth. It just made an impression on them. Like this isn't normal anymore. Crooked teeth aren't normal anymore. And I wondered if one day, I, I also thought about how like there are certain jobs. I don't know if it's still this way cause I don't work like away from home. I haven't done that in years. And what I did was all like, martial arts, yoga, teaching. I mean, you didn't have to wear makeup, but like there were some jobs, if you didn't wear a full face of makeup, it looked like you didn't care about the job. You could be anyone's idea of gorgeous, but you needed the makeup to look like you cared. It was like wearing a formal attire to a formal or dress clothes to church. You just, that is how you showed that you cared. And I've just been wondering, is getting a lot of work done on your face going to be that? Is it just going to be normal? Like, this is what you do. It's like you keep your hair trimmed, you you shave every morning, you get work done because that shows that you care about yourself and your family and the people around you and whatever. I don't know, what do you think about that? Do you think it's going to become that? This has nothing to do with knitting. It's just something on my mind. And then I was turning 50 and I thought, this is something I ought to talk to you guys about. I read Face over a year ago and it's been on my list of things to talk to you about. And that story, Instagram story, made me think of it. But I just realized around the time I was reading that book, maybe before, I don't think I could do it. I don't, I think I can do creams for, I can do stuff for scar removal. Sure. Laser stuff, maybe that, maybe. Um, acne stuff sure topical creams yes but cutting no I don't think so and the idea of doing it makes me so irritated like like ticked off like how dare you ask me to change myself yes I probably look more aged than I would have had uh, about six or seven hard years not happened but I mean they did and I dealt with it the way I did. I got really stressed out and that's just who I was and oh well. I mean, at this point, who am I gonna try to impress? Yeah, so I just, I can't see me doing it. Um, but I have nothing against anyone who does and I really would like to hear your perspective. If you you leave the door open, if you've already thought, no way, it's not for me, or of course I will if I had the money, you know, because it's going to become more affordable, like braces, right? And uh, I mean, it already is. I know lots of people getting Botox and filler. So I don't, I don't know. It doesn't seem to you live. I have so many questions about this. Do you live? You can answer any of them, including do you dream about kittens too? Um, but do you live in an environment where if you don't get some level of work done to your face, it reads as letting yourself go. I'm just curious. I hope this isn't too, uh, I don't know, 
divisive. Certainly it's not. You all are very sweet people and divisive people would have quit watching a long time ago because I'm boring. <laughs> okay, so I plan to have some progress on one of these sweaters or both and my hat when I come back and I am so glad to be able to do just a little short video for you guys. Uh, let me know your favorite episodes or characters and all creatures and definitely let me know have you read face? Are you, do you have thoughts on whether or not you would get work done? Do you think it's sort of a necessity or is it completely not for you or are you leaving the door open? I'm just curious. Bye.